Hey guys, in this video I'll be going over engine management for the Mirage F1 CE. So first, the main engine control is obviously the throttle. You push the throttle forward to increase the power and backwards to decrease the power. There's two main engine instruments. They're both inside this yellow box here. This one on top is the RPM. So this shows you how fast the engine is spinning. If I increase my throttle, obviously my RPM will increase. The bottom gauge is for the engine temperature. Let's go over some more engine controls now. First is the fuel dipper. This switch here controls the fuel dipper. Basically what this does is whenever you shoot a missile, the engine power will decrease for a couple seconds to make sure the engine doesn't intake any smoke from the missile. So basically you want to just leave this switch on. So the next uh, control is for the shock cones. On the left and right side of the plane, there are these cones here that can move forward and backward and they basically control the airflow into the engines. You can control the cones with these two switches right here. It's kind of hard to see, so if you click on the bottom of, the, of your stick, you can get it out of the way. This switch right here, if you have it pushed in, it's in automatic mode. You don't even have to worry about it. The cones will move automatically based on how fast you are. If you pull it out, then it puts it to manual mode, and you can use this switch here to move the cones forward and backward. In the cockpit, you can see the position of the cones with this gauge right here. If I use this switch and look at the gauge, you can see it moving because the cones are moving. In DCS, I would just always leave it in automatic. The only reason manual mode is here is in case automatic mode breaks. I'm not sure if it can break in DCS, but if it can, then you can use manual mode. But once again, I would just always leave it in automatic. Now I'll talk about the afterburner. When you move the throttle, there's kind of like a little bump right there. When you pass that bump, it turns on the afterburner. There's a couple things we can look at for the afterburner. The first is if you go back to the yellow box with the engine gauges, you can see there's these three lights here. This red light and green light is for the afterburner. When you turn the afterburner on, this red light's gonna come on for a second and then the red light will turn off and the green light will come on. The red light is the injection light. That means that there's fuel being injected, injected into the back of the engine to light the afterburner. Once it's lit, this light will turn off and the green light will turn on, and that means the afterburner is running. So I'm gonna turn the afterburner on and show you. So as you can see, the red light was on for a second, and now the green light's on. And if I bring the afterburner back, then the green light will turn off. So that's what those two lights are. By the way, if you click on the lights, you can test them. And I'll talk about this orange light here later. There's one other afterburner control. It's all the way back here. There's this yellow cover here. And this basically is like a master switch for the afterburner. If you flip the cover up, and it's kind of hard to click it, but if you click on the top here, it will turn that switch off, and basically, no matter what you do, it won't let you turn the afterburner on. Even if I bring the throttle forward, you can see the afterburner doesn't turn on. This switch is used for emergencies, like maybe the afterburner is not turning off, or maybe there's a fire or something. That's what this is for. If you click the cover, you can turn the switch back on and then the afterburner will work again. All right, so now I'll talk about this orange light here. Normally in the Mirage F1, you can turn the afterburner on from any throttle position. What I mean is even if my throttle's all the way back, if I want, I can just turn the afterburner straight on like this. I don't have to move it forward and then wait for it to stabilize and then turn it on. I can just turn it on from wherever I want. I can just go if I want, I can have the throttle all the way back and then just turn it straight on like that. If this orange light is on, that means that system is broken. And that means that if you want to turn the afterburner on, you have to bring the throttle all the way up just before the afterburner. And then you have to wait for the RPM to stabilize. And then you have to turn the afterburner on. I'm not sure if it's modeled in DCS yet, but if it is modeled and you see the orange light come on, that basically means that you have to make sure you bring your throttle all the way up to the, just to the afterburner, wait for the RPM to stabilize, and then turn the afterburner on. Now I'll talk about the emergency regulation switch. Up here on the left, there's this switch and there's this little control lever right here. Normally you control the engine RPM with your throttle, but if you go to this switch and you flip it up, 
then the engine RPM will not be controlled by the throttle. It will be controlled by this little lever right here. You can see when I move the lever back and forth, if you watch the RPM, you'll see it increase like that. So what this is for is if the throttle is not being responsive for some reason, like if you're moving the throttle and the RPM is kind of stuck or not changing, then you can try using this mode and instead of using the th throttle, you can try using this to control the RPM. Also, apparently if there is an oil pump failure, then you can also use this too. By the way, there's also a red light here that shows you when it's on. So if I turn it off, you can see the red light goes out and then I can control it with the throttle again. You probably won't have to use this in DCS, but it's there if you want it. Next, I'll talk about the JPT emergency regulation switch. It's this one right here in the back. It's right next to the afterburner cutoff. In the plane, there's a system that regulates the fuel flow to make sure the engine temperature is okay. If that system breaks for some reason, what you can do is you can put this into manual mode. Once again, this is probably something that you'll never have to use in DCS. I would just always leave it in automatic. That was all the engine controls. Now I'm just going to be talking about different types of emergencies. So now I'll be going over compressor stalls. A compressor stall is basically where there is a disruption of airflow to the engine. It tends to happen with older engines. It can happen a lot of times if you move the throttle too quickly or if you have if you're pulling on the stick really hard or if you're going really slow and the ways you can tell is that the plane might start to shake or you might see the rpm drop down all of a sudden the way that you get out of a compressor stall is you bring your throttle back to idle then you point the nose down a little bit to increase the speed and then the rpm should become responsive again and you slowly bring your throttle back forward next i'll go over an engine flame out this is basically where the engine just completely stops i'm just going to shut the fuel off to simulate a flame out if there's an engine flame out what you do is first you bring your throttle all the way back to idle then you turn off the air conditioner because you want to have as much air as possible to restart the engine. Then you point the nose down because you want to have some air speed to get the engine spinning to restart it. And then it's really hard to see. Actually, right now I can't see it, but I can still click on it. But there's a little button here, uh, like under the throttle. And if you hover your mouse over it, you can see it's there, uh, in-flight relight control. So what you're going to do is click on that. And you, you weren't able to see it, but it moved and that is going to restart your engine. So you can see my RPM just started to go up right now. So you can see it's restarting my engine now. Once it restarts, all you have to do is slowly increase your throttle and your engine should be working again. Then you can turn your air conditioner back on and you're good to go. If the engine doesn't restart, you can try it again. That switch I mentioned earlier, after 30 seconds, it will automatically flip back so if you try to restart your engine and it doesn't work, you have to wait for the you have to wait 30 seconds for the switch to flip back before you can try restarting it again. So basically, if you try to restart your engine and it doesn't work, you just bring your just bring your throttle back to idle and then you try you hit the restart switch again and then you try to do it again. Last thing I'll talk about is an engine fire. On the left side, there's this switch here and if I click it, you can see that it'll turn the light on. This switch will tell you if you have an engine fire. There's a top part and a bottom part. You can see the top part that says react and the bottom part that says PC. If the top part lights up, that means your engine is on fire. And if the bottom part lights up, that means your afterburner is on fire. If the engine is on fire, you bring the throttle all the way back to idle, and then you click on it to put it to the off position. Then you turn off the fuel. So you flip up this red cover here and turn the fuel off. Once you turn the throttle off and the fuel off, if the fire light goes out, then you can try restarting the engine. If you do all that and the fire is still there, then there's nothing you can do and you have to just eject. Now, if you have an afterburner fire, what you do is first you turn the afterburner off, then you use the emergency switch to cut off the afterburner. So flip up this yellow cover we talked about earlier, and then it's kind of hard, but click the top of it to turn the switch off. If the firelight goes out, then basically you're good to keep flying. You just can't use the afterburner anymore. If the light is still on, then you have to eject. That was engine management for the Mirage F1 CE. Thanks for checking out this video, and I'll see you later.